Hey everyone, Mike here. Today we're going to be talking about how to deploy a cluster of NSXT managers. If you recall from my previous video, the NSXT manager is responsible for both the management and the control plane of the NSXT solution. And typically in my lab, I always run one, but in production, you're going to want three for redundancy. And it is re recommended that you run those three on separate physical hardware, obviously, because we don't want a situation where they're all sitting on the same host and the host dies and you lose all of your management uh, functionality. It is worth mentioning that you can actually lose all three managers and the solution will continue to function. All the firewalling will still happen. IDS will still work. Uh, routing will still happen. The only thing is that in that case, if you start moving workloads around, things can get kind of wonky. So it, obviously it's not like something you'd want to operate while all three managers are offline. That said, it's pretty rare that they would all three be offline, especially if you follow best practices and have them on separate hardware. So that said, let's take a look at my screen and I'll show you guys how to do this. So here we are at my NSXT manager. We can see here, I went over to the system tab. There's a couple ways to get to the screen we're looking for. You could either hit NSX management nodes here, or you can hit appliances over here. I'll go ahead and hit appliances. So you can see here our cluster status shows stable. We've only got one node here. This will basically show stable as long as all of the nodes, however many you've configured, either one, two, or three, are green, which you can see here. If we want to see the status of the current manager, this in this case the IP is 106, we can hit view details. This will give us a nice status of all of the services running on that node. So if we saw something like degraded, we can open this up and see specifically which service is degraded, and then we can troubleshoot further from there. In this case, obviously everything looks good, so I'm gonna close this. So when it comes to setting up a cluster of NSXT managers and deciding whether or not to use a VIP, there's a few decision points here, and, and really they center around how you wanna access the NSXT managers. So what deploying a VIP will do, and you can see that here where it says set virtual IP, this will give us a single IP and it will essentially allow one of those three managers to respond. And this is only for uh, management requests. So what I mean is when you hit the GUI, you hit that one IP and it will essentially load balance that to one of the managers. Now, the managers also serve the function of operating the control plane, as I mentioned earlier. That will still be active, active, active. So we're only talking about management access only. So if we set up a VIP, we have one IP, we can get into all three managers. We don't have to worry about the individual IPs of the managers, which is great. Um, and, but you know, we don't actually have to have a VIP either. We could just not do a VIP and access the managers independently. We could also deploy a traditional load balancing solution. So all three are totally valid options. It really depends on what you're looking to do. I would say in many cases, setting a VIP is just fine. So that's what we're gonna do today. So before we actually deploy our other two managers, I'm gonna go ahead and set up our VIP. I like to do this first, but as I mentioned, you don't have to. To do that, I'm gonna hit set virtual IP, and it's just gonna ask for an IP, and this is essentially the IP that whatever the active node is will answer to. In my case, I'm gonna go with 172.16.251.245. I'm gonna hit save. And this will take a couple of minutes to process. Once this processes, the node that I have that's currently active will now start responding on both its original IP as well as the VIP that I've configured. So I'm gonna go ahead and speed this up and then we'll get to the rest of the config. All right, so we can see here that the NSXT manager uh, actually threw this error here, but everything is still functioning fine. So if I refresh it, we'll see that it comes right back up. And there we go, we can see now that the, the IP is showing that it's assigned to 251.106, which is our only node that we have deployed, so that's good. So just to show you guys, so this, this URL, I actually set this up in my home DNS, uh, nsxt.home.lab, and that is translated to this IP right here. So if I hit the VIP right now, I should actually be able to get right back into the manager. So let's try that. And there we have it, we're right back into the manager. So I'm gonna switch back over to the other screen and we will add our other two appliances. 
So to do that, we're gonna hit add NSX appliance. It is worth mentioning that during this deployment process, it's going to ask you for the details of the vCenter you wanna deploy this appliance to. If you haven't added the vCenter as a compute manager already, you'll need to do that first. That said, there's two ways to add these appliances. One is the GUI, which I'm showing you now. The other is you can actually deploy all three managers as an OVA appliance in the same way I did in my other video. And then you can actually join them from the CLI into a cluster. So either way is perfectly fine. I like to use the GUI since I've already got everything set up, but again, all three are, or all two are totally valid options. So let's do that. So once we pop up the add NSX appliance uh, button, we're gonna be prompted to input a host name and it's going to ask for an FQDN or a host name. You can just put in uh, just a name for now. Uh, so I'm gonna do NSXT2. For IP, I'm gonna have this be 107, which is the next available IP. Um, and you need to make sure you put in the net mask here, the CIDR, and then the gateway. So we'll throw that in there. Everything else was already populated for me from the original config I did on this manager. Down here, it's gonna ask for the size. I'm gonna stick with small, but obviously you can change that if you need to. So we'll hit next. And this is what I was talking about. It's asking for the details of where this manager should live. Now, this MG VCSA01 is actually a vCenter I use for my actual VM, so I don't want it to go there. So I'm gonna deploy it to my main vCenter and I will stick it in cluster 20. And everything else here looks good. I need to select a network. This is pretty important. If we don't do this, then the manager will deploy, but it won't be able to contact the other managers. And I'll go with this one right here. It is important to note that these the managers don't actually have to be on the same network. You could actually have them on separate IP subnets, and that's fine. There are some port requirements that I, I can't quote off the top of my head, but uh, that's all well documented if that's something you're looking to do. So I'm gonna hit next, and we're gonna be prompted with the usual stuff. Uh, we need to enable SSH, our root access, copy and paste all of our passwords. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick. All right, so we kicked off the first appliance, and the nice thing is we can actually go ahead and do our second one right away. So I'm gonna blast right through this. So there we have it. So I've got both managers being deployed right now. And we're gonna go ahead and fast forward this video quite a bit. This will take a while. We're deploying two seven gig, I think they are OVAs, and they need to not only deploy, but they need to come up, all of the services will start. I'm guessing this is somewhere around 10 minutes, maybe 15. Uh, so I'm gonna fast forward it so you guys don't have to sit through that. All right, so it looks like we're good to go. So we've got now three managers. We deployed them, it was super easy. Uh, you can see here the VIP is still assigned to that original node. Uh, if I were to lose that node, I would actually see uh, some time for that failover to happen. It's somewhere around, I wanna say it's about five minutes. So if I were to, to drop it right now, we'd wait about five minutes for one of the other nodes to pick up the management functions. Again, keeping in mind, the control plane will still be up and operational, but the management piece would be down for a few minutes while that failover happens. And that kind of comes back to one of those design decisions of, you know, what can you tolerate? If you can tolerate a couple minutes of the management being down in the case of an extreme, you know, outage, then, you know, you're probably okay just using a VIP. Um, that said, from here, the only thing really left to do, I, I have the ability to change the VIP if I need to. I can also remove that VIP. So, uh, I'm gonna first show you guys, uh, so I, I hit 245 before. If I just hit it again, you'll actually see that everything will come back up and it'll look the same as it was because I'm still ultimately hitting that same node uh, as when we started. From there, if we go back here, uh, as I mentioned, if you look at actions, you're kind of limited in what you can really do. At this point, it's pretty much remove the node or, or add a node. Uh, and you see in this tab, it, it ended up refreshing successfully. So. 
We are up and running on three managers. We've got a VIP configured. If I want to delete the VIP, I literally just hit remove. Uh, it takes a couple minutes for it to remove. Likewise, it takes a couple minutes for the VIP to, to come up. Uh, so that's all for today, guys. Hopefully this video was helpful. I appreciate you guys checking out the channel and the videos. If you like this content and you want to see more, be sure to subscribe, like, comment. Let me know what you guys think or what you guys want to see. If you guys are having trouble with this, comment below. I'll help you out the best I can. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Have a good one.